In this video, we're going back to the basics to show you how to do a basic keyframe animation, such as zooming in and zooming out of your video and how to save them as your own presets. If you're ready, let's jump on in. So what is keyframing? Well, the key word here, pun intended, is frame because in video it's made up of multiple frames. Now all videos, depending on how you shoot it, has a different frame rate. A standard frame rate is 24 frames per second. So you have 24 frames in that one second. So a keyframe is you deciding, okay, I'm gonna set an important frame here as the start point of a movement and then create another keyframe as the end point of that movement. In all the frames in between, we just call those frames in-betweens. The most common place to keyframe and manipulate different effects and parameters is inside of the effects control panel. But you can also now set keyframes using the new properties panel if you're using version 25 and above. To keep it simple, let's start with a basic zoom animation. So for the demo clip, I'm using the Storyblocks plugin and I wanna find a stock video clip of a boxer. And what's really cool is I can just search directly here in the plugin and I can download any size version of this clip. So let's just go with the smallest version here and it will appear directly in my project panel. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this clip inside the timeline. So let's say we want the clip to start zoomed in and then zoom back out. So first of all, let's change our anchor point to the zoom in point, let's say his nose. So when I click anchor point here, I can then take this anchor point and move it on his nose. So now all I need to do is keyframe the scale and not the position, which saves us time. And for our start position in the beginning, we actually want it to be more zoomed in. And now when I zoom in, it goes on his nose here. So I think around 354, let's do 355, just so we have a good whole number here. And now we can click on toggle animation to create our first keyframe. And then we can move a few frames forward to where we want it to zoom back out again. So let's change this to 100. And look at that. Now between these two keyframes, it zooms out. So you can see it's a little bit slow and it doesn't look that great. So first of all, let's zoom in here to the effect controls using this bar down here. So we have more space to work with. So let's move this in to make it faster but it still doesn't look that great. What we need to do is open up scale parameters and you can see it goes from point A to point B in a straight line. We need to make it have more of a curve so it looks nicer and is more smooth. So we can right click on the end keyframe and go to ease in and this creates a curve. And now let's go to the first clip and this time let's ease out. So now we have this little curve here, but let's make it a little bit faster. And now if we play this, it looks a bit better, right? You can play around with the speed until it looks much better. But if we use the arrow keys to go frame by frame, there's no motion blur happening with this animation. And that's because, well, for one, we wish that Premiere Pro had motion blur here directly in our motion parameters and effect controls, but it's not here yet. So until then there's a workaround and it's using the transform effect to use the shutter angle to create our own motion blur. So let's go ahead and let's undo this animation. Let's say we don't want it anymore. You can just click on this toggle animation to turn it off. Let's press okay. So now we need to apply the transform effect. So let's go to effects and let's type in transform and underneath the folder transform, you'll find the transform effect. With the clip selected, you can just double click to apply it. And now we have the transform effect here and you can see it also has position, scale, and we also have some skew here, which is different from what you see above. And also you have shutter angle, which is what will give us that motion blur that I was talking about. So first let's adjust the anchor point again. You can see that this one's the anchor point. You can see there's another one here and that's for position. So I'm just gonna move the anchor point up to the nose again, somewhere around here. And then I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. I'm going to scale in first, let's say 355. And then let's create our first keyframe by clicking on the toggle animation and then go forward just a little bit and let's scale back out. 
And once again, you can be like, Gal, where is the motion blur? What happened here? Well, this is where we need to go to the shutter angle. Typically the 180 degree rule works best. So you can see here as we go frame by frame, we get some blur happening on the sides. So if we do 360 and then make this a little bit faster, you can see that we have some more motion blur. So it's really up to you to decide how much you want here. We can make it more 180 in this case, so it looks more natural, but we still get that nice motion blur that we missed before. But remember to also right click on the keyframe and also do the ease in and the ease out. And that way it looks a lot smoother. So I'm gonna show you how to save this transform effect as your own preset that you can use in the future. But first, so far, if this video is helping you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. And if you're new here, I'm Kelsey. I'm the creator here of Premiere Gal. And each week we share new and exciting video tools and effects that you can use to spice up your edits and have more fun as a creator. So as I mentioned earlier, me and my team use the Storyblocks plugin directly in Premiere Pro because it's so convenient. We can search for any type of video here. You can see from the drop down, you can search for a stock footage, you can search for audio, and you can search for images plus video templates as well. So I've already downloaded this other clip of this boxer from a different angle. And what if I want to add a transition between these two clips? What I can do is I can search for a glitch overlay transition. Of course, you can download Premiere Pro template files, but I just want like a video clip that I can overlay between the two clips. So this flashing light glitch is the one that I like. So I'm going to drag and drop this between the two clips. And because it has a black background, I'm actually going to go to effect controls and change this to a different blend mode. You can do screen to get rid of the black, but even better, you can do lighten. And this makes it so you can't really see the clips beneath it because with screen, you see a little bit more. So I like the lighten mode and I'm gonna make sure to line up a full screen of white at this transition point. So you can see here, if we zoom in, all we need to do is press option and that arrow bracket key to the left to bring this over. So now at this cut point, we have a full screen flash. Now when we hit play, it creates a nice transition. Of course you can get audio to spice it up. So I downloaded some sound effects from Storyblocks and here's what we got. I also added the glove boxing sound effects here. So I took just a couple of these and I paired it up with the hits. Most of the time when I'm editing, I'm on a time crunch to get the video out. And Storyblocks just saves us that much more time because we can download directly from the panel and we have zero concerns over copyright. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, you can head over to storyblocks.com slash premiergal to get started. Or you can click on the link in the description. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. And now let's show you how you can save your keyframing as its own preset. So back here in this timeline where we created our first First transform effect. If we want to save this as our own preset, you can right click on transform and simply select save preset. And you can select multiple effects at once and right click to save preset if you have multiple effects that you've keyframed. So this one, let's just retitle zoom out demo because it's for our demo here and hit OK. So now let's say we wanted to use that preset at the beginning of this new clip here. Let's move up this overlay glitch effect we got. Now let's create an adjustment layer to apply our preset to. So click on new item, go to adjustment layer, press okay, and drag and drop this on our clip. And now we can go to effects and we can search for zoom out demo and drag and drop it on the adjustment layer. So now when we play back, we can see how the speed does. So you can see it's a little bit slow, so we can speed it up just by making a little bit faster. There we go. So that's the benefit of saving your keyframing work as a preset. And you can do this with any number of effects that you want. Another thing I wanted to show you about keyframing is that you can actually keyframe opacity in the timeline. You don't have to keyframe it up here in effect controls. Inside the timeline, if you click on the wrench tool, you wanna go to show video keyframes. When you have this enabled, you'll see this line here. And this line controls the opacity. So if I bring this down, 
you can see the video becomes more transparent. Well, you can use the pen tool to animate that. So the best way to show you how to do that is just by zooming in here. And let's say we just want a subtle fade in. We can use the pen tool to create a keyframe, a little point there, and then a starting keyframe. And if you want a curve, you can press Command or Control, and you can create that curve look just by moving this handle around. And there we go. We have a little fade in from black. Of course, you can just right click on the end of the clip and add a default transition, but some people like the ability to actually keyframe opacity. And of course, if I go back to this track here, you can also keyframe music and audio as well by using the pen tool. Again, you wanna go to the wrench tool and go to show audio keyframes. This lets you manipulate the volume of the clip just like we were manipulating the opacity of the video. So of course at the end of the clip they have these new uh, drag and really useful fade in, fade out. But what if you wanna create a fade out and back in in the middle of a song? This is where you can use the pen tool in the audio, right? So you can just create uh, little clicks like I showed you before and create these speed ramps. And this is especially useful if you need to duck when somebody's talking, so that way the music isn't as loud. And the same thing as I showed you before, you can press Command on a Mac or Option on a PC to create some curves so it's more smooth. And also, if you've updated to version 25 or above of Premiere Pro, you now have the Properties panel, so you can actually keyframe these parameters directly here. Now, of course, this isn't the transform effect. There's no motion blur here. This is feedback to Premiere Pro. I would love it if the shutter angle was here or some sort of blur that we could keyframe was built in here to properties panel because for now, we still need to go with our workaround of applying that transform effect that I just did. But let's say you wanted to create an animated crop. You can do that here, which is great. The crop tool is now built into the properties panel. Let's say we wanted to crop the top here to create a letter box and the bottom as well. Let's say we want the crop to be animated after the zoom in. So if this is our endpoint, we can just click create a keyframe here, create a keyframe here on the bottom, and you can see that keyframes were automatically made in the effect controls. And then we can move the playhead forward once that animation ends right here, and we can just bring this down to zero. So now, over the course of these keyframes, a crop is animated in. So that's how you can use the properties panel to keyframe the crop tool. So I hope this was a good introduction to keyframing inside of Premiere Pro. And if you want more videos like this, that are more beginner approaches to different effects inside of Premiere Pro, be sure to leave a comment below. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.